Hi, and welcome to the Outdoor Nature Classroom. We're going to be coming here during videos to discuss in further detail some of the nature concepts that we're learning about. Today, let's take a closer look at what we found in each nest box to try to identify what type of bird lived in each one. Here we are at one of the many Fair Glen bird boxes and uh, we put these up last summer for the first time along the shoreline here and across the road at our meadow habitat and uh, let's open it up to see if anything lived in it this past summer. Hey, looks like we got a bird nest in there. If we take a closer look at some of the materials, looks like we got some, whoa, really big feathers. Wow, those are huge, those are like goose feathers. And it uh, looks like we got a really solid base of pine needles as the bottom. Question number one to ask is what type of nest is it? All of these are from birdhouses, so we can narrow it down to cavity nester type birds. And how large is the opening? How large is the size of the box? Here's the blueprint for our Fair Glen bird boxes. So based on the nest size alone, it couldn't be a Canada goose. They actually nest on the ground, and their egg wouldn't even fit through the box opening. So there are some birds that actually do um, use the lining of their nest made with other birds' feathers just for kind of insulation to keep it cozy. Let's find out what kind of bird uses goose feathers for insulation and pine needles for a base. Whoa. Wait. No. No way. Do you think a chickadee's already started nesting in this? Do you think this is a chickadee? Oh no, maybe. We forgot that birds like chickadees, who live at Fairhavens even in the winter, would start nesting much earlier. Since they don't have to migrate back each year, they get first dibs at checking out the nest boxes. Do you think the chickadees nested here last summer? The materials in the nest will give us a clue. Pine needles for the base, and goose feathers for the top. At the end of this video, we will review the contents of each box, and then provide you with a link so that you can identify the bird nest yourself before I give you the answers. All right, so clean with caution. We're gonna check another one. The spring isn't ideal to be checking them. Um, winter would be better, so we'll just be careful to make sure that we're not disturbing a bird that's already come back. Question number two is what type of habitat was a nest located in? This is important because certain birds are pickier than others when it comes to the location of their nest, and this can really narrow down our list of birds. And what do we have in here? Sticky. This one has a security lock on it to prevent predators from opening the door. We actually do have a predator guard on the, the nest boxes though. That's an old maple syrup uh, sap pail that we've just drilled a hole in and put on the post. And it stops uh, raccoons and uh, different weasels, and even snakes from climbing up the post. Oh wow, this one looks a lot different. Very sticky. Question number three. What type of materials were used in each of the nests? You can see here some different fibers, almost like a dryer lint. And then we have lots of the old green uh, moss and some long strips of cedar off the trees, which are in the forest just to my right. Whoa, there's a shell in it. Look, they grabbed mud from the river, I think, because there's a, a shell. It looks like it's and what bird do you think would make a cozy nest with a base layer of moss mixed with cedar bark and a few tufts of dryer lint on top? Nest box number three was also beside a river, however it was unique from boxes one and two because it was on the edge of a shallower and marshy inlet of the river, covered with cattails and bulrushes. It was also beside a small pine forest. And it looks like we have a third. It literally has the same stuff. Pine needles base, yeah. goose feathers for the top. What is that? It's like a zip tie or something. What the? What? What? Wow, like these uh, birds had a very interesting taste for their decor. It's a handle from something. What the heck? Some sort of big plastic thing. We're going to take that out of the nest so that they're not uh, chewing on plastic. Good um, reminder to clean up couch. garbage in the spring. 
Test boxes 4, 5, and 6 were quite different from the first three in that they were not on the edge of a river. Nest boxes 4 and 5 were actually on the side of the highway on the golf course fence. There was a patch of cedar trees close by and the wetland was across the road, which was evident in some of the nesting materials used. Bird box number 4. What do we have inside? Alright, inside this one we have a solid base layer of moss pretty consistently moss. Um, this one does have a new material in it, which looks to be some fuzzes from some cattails. I believe this is cattail seed fluff. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and then we also have the same type material here. These long strips are the bark of cedar and maybe even some grasses mixed in as well. This one doesn't have as many feathers as the first one we checked out. One big goose feather, but oh, hey. There's something new back here. Oh, this one has some old eggs in it. So, it looks like this egg is cracked at the top, cracked at the bottom. You can even see some old casings from some bugs, so this one I don't think survived, unfortunately. Question number four. If eggs were found, which there were, what was their size, color, and shape? Um, this egg has mostly white across the surface with some brown, rusty brown speckles at the base. So we'll have to take a look and check out what kind of bird has an egg that color and that size. We'll keep that sample for later. And, oh, it looks like there's one more inside here. Yeah, unfortunately not all nests are successful. Yep, same coloration, rusty brown speckles on the bottom and plain white all the rest of it. One piece wonder. You can see the shape of this. And uh, once again, similar to our first nest, it has lots of goose feathers and then a solid layer of pine needles on the bottom. Not much else to it. A little bit of mud or just bird poop mixed into the whole side there. And you can see a little cup right here. Even got a little uh, back wall to kind of tuck into those goose feathers. It's a nice little cozy corner. Um, they usually like to nest the farthest away from the opening. It just makes it safer so that raccoons and stuff aren't able to reach their hands in to get the eggs. Nest box number six was the closest to thick shrub habitat. And uh, it was on the edge of our small meadow. Ooh, hey, we have a new variety of nest. Come and check it out. Some graffiti on the back of this one too but uh, I think that was just from the wood that we used. Some hooligan birds. Yeah. Yep, looks like sticks and nothing but sticks. We also found a few spider egg sacs, which were used by this bird species as pest control. So when they hatched, they would eat all the mites that were in the nest material. Self bird box cleaning at its finest. Now let's try to solve the mystery of what lived in each box. Now that you know what questions to ask, you can pause the video here and then go to the Nest Watch website to make your identifications and come back to this video when you want to know the answers. And welcome back for the grand reveal. Let's see what the results are. Nest box one was actually the trickiest because even though we found two chickadees trying to enter the box and checking it out for this year, it doesn't mean that they were the ones who nested in it last summer. Because of the top fluffy layer of feathers, I would guess that it was a tree swallow that lived there last summer. I can also confirm that I saw a couple of them flying around the area. Nest box number two was definitely a chickadee family. You can see that because of all the thick moss. Nest box number three, despite having some plastic in it, it was similar to the first, with a thick layer of pine needles as a base and some fluffy feathers on top. That one was also a tree swallow nest. Nest box number four, with the moss layer, with some cattail fluff, animal fur, and the two eggs, was definitely a chickadee nest. We could tell that by the eggs. Nest box number five, although it didn't have as many feathers in it, the back corner where the little nest cup was, was very thickly walled with feathers. So my guess for nest box number five would also be tree swallow. 
And nest box number six, the twig filled one, was a house wren. Evidence does suggest that unfortunately it did fly across the road, peck out an egg, and scare off the adults of the chickadee nest. Maybe next year we'll move those three nest boxes a little bit further apart to give the house run a bit more space. Thanks for watching this video. I want to encourage you to build your very own nest boxes with your family. And check out the Nest Watch link to find actual PDF guides on how to build your own designs for various types of birds that might be in your neighborhood. Thanks for joining us on this feather-focused outdoor creation experience.